Not long ago, the 19th CPC National Congress officially put forward Xi Jinping's thought on socialism with the Chinese characteristics for New Year. The Xi Jinping thought is a whole range of Xi Jinping's fundamental ideas and principles. Here I will discuss with you briefly his economic thinking to see to what extent it's new, fresh, and to examine its possible implications for China and beyond. I see three broad categories in his economic thinking. People orientation, qualitative change, and new industrial revolution. Let me discuss them one by one. First, Chinese economic development should be people-oriented and should meet the needs of the Chinese people for better life, which also means providing better services for the people for their whole life cycle, from childbirth to elderly care and more, which means unprecedented more opportunities for development, for innovation given the size of the Chinese population. This approach is interesting because it's in sharp contrast with Donald Trump's approach, which may be called voters-oriented. People-oriented economy and voter-oriented economy produce different results. The people-oriented economy is highly inclusive and brings tangible benefits to the vast majority of the people which is the case of China over the past four decades. And the voter-oriented one leads to greater social division and growing gaps between rich and poor. Second, China's main economic objective is now to strive for better quality, better quality, better quality, rather than quantity. Quality is a key word for Xi Jinping's economic thinking. After more than three decades of rapid growth, China's economy has been transitioning to slower but higher quality growth, which is only natural for a country with such positive ambitions. Third, embracing the new technological revolution is vital for China's future success. So China embraces the bullet trains, the internet economy, and AI and renewable energies, making them the new drivers for the Chinese economy. China missed the first industrial revolution of steam engines and missed the second industrial revolution of electricity. But as for the third industrial revolution of the internet, big data and AI, China now is on a par with the United States in many areas and is the leader in some other areas such as mobile payment, e-commerce and shared economy. Some observers claim, I don't know whether it's fair or not, Xi Jinping is forward-looking and embracing the future, the year 2050, while Donald Trump embraces the past, the year 1950. Perhaps we can use elementary arithmetics to explain Xi Jinping's economic thinking. On the above three principles, we have addition, Subtraction, multiplication, and division. Let's look at them one by one. First, addition, which means to increase targeted investment in emerging industries of strategic importance, such as renewable energies, information technology, new materials, and applying new technologies to traditional manufacturing. To increase the supply of better quality goods and services. Over the past five years, Xi Jinping has launched a larger scale, what he called supply side structural reform. What does it mean exactly? We can use agricultural produce as an example. Rather than focusing on quantity, as in the past, there is increasing demand for green products. So China invests heavily more, invests more and more in green agriculture to meet increasing demand from China's rapidly expanding middle class for green products. Number two, subtraction, which means deleveraging to prevent financial real estate bubbles. Enterprises and local governments 
are required to lower their high leverage levels, and companies are required to cut excess capacity for lower end products. The list goes on. And number three, multiplication, which means to be innovative, to carry out innovations. Innovation becomes the driving force for China's growth, which indeed produces multiplying effects. Look at what's going on in China today. It's exciting. The Internet revolution, WeChat revolution, e-commerce revolution, bullet train revolution, the list goes on, which have changed China and moved China to the frontier, to the forefront frontier of new technological revolution. China is the most exciting place to be if you care about new technologies and innovative economies. And number four, division, which means the subtraction of subtraction, which means the deleveraging to prevent financial risk bubbles by big margin to close this kind of polluting factories with doubled efforts. In these years of global uncertainty, with rising protectionism and deglobalization, Xi Jinping and his new economic thinking provide certainty and confidence, which is good for China and for the rest of the world.